Well, I am so personally excited about having Gary, I know I can't call you Dr. Nelson, but you know, having Gary on the show, thank you for being here. It's good to be here. My friend. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a deal going because actually, Gary being president of Tyndale, May 8th, what is going to happen on May 8th? May 8th is a graduation okay. at the seminary. And, and I, I know someone who's graduated. I'm going to graduate. Yeah, right. I mean, Lord willing, <laughs> and with his, his help, yeah. we're going to shake hands on May 8th, and I'm going to finish my master's in theological studies, right? Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. I, well, that was my vow, because, Gary, you're moving on right. to new things, but you can't move on yet. Let's no. talk about Tyndale. Okay. And tell me a little bit about the history. This is a big year. Yep. Yeah. 125 years. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. It is, actually. It's, yeah. it's quite striking, because... Uh, in uh, 1884, 94, I should say, eight, yeah, 1894, 1894, they uh, they started what was then called Toronto Bible College. Okay. Uh, it came because Hudson Taylor came from China to to speak and and try to bring a, a number of missionaries back with him to China. Wow. And a Methodist, an Anglican, a Baptist, and a Presbyterian. Wow, that could be pastor. Trouble. It was right. And right from the start, it's been transdenominational. Beautiful. But they began this idea, and out of that that time in 1894, wow. 125 years of history. It's been quite remarkable. That's amazing. So over time, it had a few different names. Yes. Because I remember it being Ontario Bible College. Right. Right? Am I missing one? Uh, London College of Bible right. and Mission joined with uh, was then Toronto Bible College okay. and became Ontario Bible College. Okay. And then Toronto, uh, then Tyndale Seminary. Right. So yeah. it's, and it's had about four or five different geographical places. And our latest one is on Bayview, just below yeah. Steel. And yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. The the beautiful setting there on Bayview. Tell us a little bit about that setting and well, the it's, story behind it's a that. wonderful story of uh, the Sisters of St. Joseph who were they were dwindling in numbers and they wanted to deal with their property. It was their mother house. At one time, 600 sisters used to live there. It's beautiful. And uh, they came together and my predecessor, Brian Stiller, had the vision that this could become a place for a Christian university mm -hmm. and a seminary. Yeah. And out of that has emerged this, yeah. it's, it's absolutely exquisite mm -hmm. chapel and... Uh, and the building and, itself. And I, I, hearing the history, I appreciate that still DNA is there today of yeah. this multicultural, right. multi-denominational perspective, yeah. even in the profs, yeah. which I've really valued as a student there. Yeah, yeah, you know? it's 56 different denominations. Wow. Probably 60 different ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. it, and it makes for, and right from the start, uh, the founder, Elmer Harrison, a few of them said uh, not neither fundamentalist or modernist. So right. there's been this, this desire to, to kind of the full fabric mm -hmm. of evangelical yeah. life under one tent has, right. been, has been one of the remarks. So we have Newfoundland Pentecostals, right. and we can have uh, Egyptian Coptic priests who Amazing. are studying in the same classes. And it's, it brings a real richness to the Yeah, learning. it really does. And they hear yeah. each other mm -hmm. in a way. And, and I think they become stronger in their own tradition. I agree. Um, tell us about your journey. How did you uh, get to in this role? You've done missions, you've led churches, and yeah. now like... Well, there, are, there were four themes that had been... I'd always taught at a seminary um, all the time that I was pastoring. Okay. And then in the, my previous 10 years, I was the head of an of a international development mission organization. Right. And when they first approached me, I could see, I've always believed that God's will is not a tightrope to be walked, but a park to be explored. Wow, that's good. And, and the best paths in that park are usually the ones where the kind of themes that have, God's been working on mm -hmm. in you are kind of converging. And that's what happened right. in this. It was the, the chance to pour my life into students yeah. and to... Uh, I believed it was a critical time in the life of the church and the mission of the church. Right, so right. all of those things were part of that. So 125 years is quite an accomplishment for any, let's say, any organization yes. in this country. Mm -hmm. And how have you seen, though, in the change of education then, the change of approach of education? Right. I mean, you haven't been there 125 no, years, I don't no, think. No, no. You know, but... Think of what, what's happened, what's happening now in their approach to education. Well, actually, the themes are probably the same. It's, it's the modes. It's the way that we can access education. For instance, 30 years ago, uh, 
the dean of the seminary said that the future of the church was going to be the diaspora that were coming to Canada. So we have, we have worked diligently to build trust within the, within the multicultural nature of, of the city of Toronto. Yeah. But also his big thing was accessibility. How do we provide as many opportunities for people to access right. theological education yeah. and now university education? How do we provide the kind of thing that develops character, mm -hmm. develops critical thinking, yeah. And also develops a, a kind of sense of Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know important. myself. I'm part of a modular program. Yes. I go Monday nights with the same cohort. Yeah. Uh, Sixty percent of the people in my class are in the workplace. Right. 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 I take online courses right. when I can't get into yeah. you know take the course on. So you're really providing a whole variety of pedagogy for people to learn from anywhere in the world. Absolutely. My and online course had African, Australian, yeah. people everywhere. It's amazing. And and in terms of the university, you you they come at 18 and you're building a foundation. And our belief is that if you can build that foundation, mm. launching them into the next thing, yeah. you're providing them the equipment to actually navigate and negotiate a, a, an incredibly complex world right. as a person of faith. And why do you think it's important to have theological education, formal theological education? Because I think in this complex time, you really need to reflect biblically and theologically. It, I mean, what seems like simple answers are really not as simple as we right. think. Like, how do we... How do, how do we decide what really matters? Right. Like what knowledge is really important? Mm -hmm. And then how do we navigate that in the radical center of a gospel that says it's about, a, it's about love and servanthood and right. all of those kind of things? So I, I just think the challenge in, in this day and age for people of faith is, is to somehow interact in that kind of complexity with not easy answers, yeah. but with a humble sensibility. And as we've already said, this theological education is just for those going into what we would call formal ministry, right? right? Talk to that. Yeah, well, in the seminary, probably 70% of the students are not training for right. a, quotes, traditional theological, yeah. uh, pastoral kind of education. Right. Right. At the university, uh, we've got 40 students in graduate school studying master's degrees now and PhDs right. uh, in philosophy and right. business and, and, and all of those. Education. And teacher education. teacher yeah. education. Imagine a whole cohort of teachers mm. who've been taught at Tyndale yeah. now out into the public school right. system. And grounded and knowing their faith, right? Yes. Absolutely. Not just maybe in, you know, no disrespect to our Sunday schools and our no, Christian no. education in churches, but right. having a deep theological understanding of why we believe what we believe is essential. Absolutely. And I yeah. think the other part of that is not in a bubble. So, yes. so we invite non Christians to participate in our Bachelor of Education program. Yeah, amazing. And so they have to learn to navigate that in a place that is unapologetically right. Christian. So how are you going to celebrate the 125th? Big celebration on the 22nd. Okay. And And uh, there's a big homecoming. We're, oh, we're announcing the chair, the Alistair E. McGrath Chair of Christian Thought and Spirituality. Oh, wow. That's exciting. Yeah, so is. people can find out more information. Just go to the website, Tyndale, okay. www.tyndale.ca. Okay. Yeah. okay. I've been to that website a few times I myself. You, you know, I got a back door <laughs> in, too. Yeah, yeah. I personally am so grateful for Tyndale. I have a son who's graduated, mm -hmm. a daughter, two daughters-in-law who have graduated from Tyndale. Right. And as we have this, we've made this deal today, okay? Yeah, yeah. May I'm 8th. shaking your hand. On shaking my hand. This It'll be an official, <laughs> but thank you for what you do. Thanks. Uh, and we just, as we are passionate about learning and growing, I even say to those of you watching that, you know, you don't have to be in full-time formal ministry, but you can grow in your faith. And let's be people who are deep in our knowledge of Scripture. So we go out into this nation and around the world with the gospel of Christ, really knowing what we believe. Thank you for being here so much. It's been great. Gary, God bless you. And now a magician discovers why fame and fortune, well, they're only an illusion. Watch. Watch.